Mobile devs in a weird place with all the innovation going on in Swift UI and Flutter and is anything going on in Android? We should check in on them. But more importantly, React Native. It's crazy to see the cool things people are doing on mobile, but it's sad to see we're not moving as fast as we used to. It feels like the incentives to innovate in mobile have been dying out and the few people who have been pushing to innovate have gotten more crap than excitement around the work that they're doing. This is a rant about React Native. I want to be very clear about that. I think React Native is one of the most misunderstood piece of technology of modern times. And it's really sad to see the amount of pushback that React Native gets just because it's a piece of JavaScript that people don't want on their mobile apps as mobile devs. And I get it. I understand JavaScript's associated with a lot of things that mobile devs don't want or like. But those fundamental misunderstandings have resulted in React Native being ignored by a lot of the developers who would benefit the most from it. If you're looking to build a new mobile app and React Native isn't at the top of your list for options, I would question why. If you can use React Native for the app you're building, it's really hard to justify not using it because of the amount of benefits it comes with. And not just, I think the code is better. Technical wins like OTA updates that don't have to go through the app store, a native layer that binds to iOS and Android and other platforms like tvOS, Microsoft's Windows, Mac OS, and even crazy things now like Xbox and PlayStation. The value of React Native goes beyond us liking JavaScript and HTML like syntax. But every time we talk about those wins, the same obnoxious article comes up. And this is where Airbnb comes into the picture. It is so frustrating that this poorly framed article from 2017, almost seven years ago now, is the continued starting point of so many conversations about React Native. It's basically become a meme because this article was almost but barely relevant at the time and the things that clarified its value were ignored by most of the readers. And it still gets cited as the reason to not use React Native to this day. I actually had somebody replying with this link in a tweet I made a few days ago about React Native. It's insane that people think this is relevant. Let's quickly go over it so you can see why I'm so annoyed by this article. The, the TLDR, the title is Sunsetting React Native. And because of that, people continue to say, oh, Airbnb thought React Native wasn't good enough. It's not what they say in this article. Let's take a quick look at what they're actually saying. They said that there are numerous technical and organizational issues that they outline. I like the framing there, but I do like they said when React Native works is intended, engineers were able to move at an unparalleled speed. Not just the speed of how they can make new code, but the speed they can ship and get things to users is significantly faster too. Right? The code once instead of twice, really cool. Developer experience, really great. They detail this much further in. They even say here, this is one of my favorite parts. Of the React Native engineers, the people who use React Native at Airbnb, 60% said their experience was amazing, 20% was leaning positive, and only 20% was negative at all, and only 5% was strongly negative. The vast majority of the engineers that were using this stuff really liked using it, obviously clear here. And while they said that most of the engineers on it had picked React Native, I think it's important to recognize that very few people who have picked and used React Native in production have ended up disliking it. It's kind of one of those tailwindy things where it seems cursed when you first hear about it. It's like, you no, don't do that. And then you do it. It's like, oh shit. It could have always been this easy. And it really shows. I also love they call out React Native is maturing. Again, 2017, it's gotten so much better. I think it's like 75% or so of the React core team is focused entirely on React Native. The majority of the staffing at Meta for React is focused on React Native. And this is probably the most important part people miss is that they were integrating React Native into large existing apps that were consistently moving on the native side. And that is tough. That is really tough. I React Native was built to be part of a native app. And obviously, this is how Meta uses it. But the guidelines and standards for how to use React Native without React Native owning the root of your app is tough. Much like React on the web, React on mobile is much easier to work with if you have the root down owned by React. Because then all of React state management, all of React systems and behaviors are owned by the app. You don't have to write anywhere near as much glue code. You still have to write native bindings if they don't already exist. But when you have something like Expo, and I don't think this gets talked about enough. If you look through the packages folder on Expo's GitHub, the sheer number number of packages for all the different things you might need to do in a native layer in React Native is insane. This AV package uses the best audio video players from Android and iOS, and it gives you a really simple binding to call them in your React Native app. When I was working on a project with a native iOS and Android dev, and I showed him Expo AV, his immediate reaction was, oh, this is better than the code I was about to write for our AV layer. That's so cool. It's They get this. There are people who are really good at iOS and Android building an abstraction for us to use on top. Things like battery, things like blur, if you want to blur an image or a background. Like 
like this, something that a lot of devices have a native capability for. But if you're doing this in JavaScript, it's going to be slow as hell. So don't use Expo Blur. It will call native code and just spit you back the results in JavaScript. It's so nice that you can use native stuff that you call to and from JavaScript. Almost all of these packages are native. These bind to Swift code, Objective-C code, or Java and Kotlin over on the Android side. You are running native code when you use React Native. Your update logic and the layer that controls what appears in the first place, that is JavaScript. The JavaScript is just telling the native layer what to do. So if you have a huge pile of packages like what we have here with Expo, it suddenly gets significantly easier to build good apps with good native bindings. And you don't have to go learn the status bar API for iOS and Android when you can use Expos instead. And this lets you bind translucent or styles and has good docs and makes it much easier to control the status bar behaviors in your apps. If you're building a new app right now, it's really hard to not justify going with React Native because of how much these benefits, how much these packages, how much this ecosystem gives you for free. But Airbnb didn't have a lot of that at the time, and they already had native solutions they had built and a team of native engineers for both platforms. That is why they didn't want to move, because the native engineers were tired of making a bunch of hacks to enable the web engineers to do weirder, potentially slower things on mobile. This was an organizational structure challenge. This was the relationship between the mobile native teams and the mobile JavaScript teams and that not working out. I wish they had the balls to say that, but that is, in the end, I think what doomed this project. My favorite reaction to this article, to this day, comes from the CEO of Shopify. This was the article that Farhan posted where they announced that Shopify was moving entirely over to React Native. And as you can guess, everyone's favorite article is immediately replied. It's only three years out of date instead of seven this time, but it still came up. And Toby's response was so perfect. This is Airbnb's mobile team. They were so close to pushing through the hard parts and having all of the wins, but Airbnb likes to feel righteous more than they like to be right. And that's always been Airbnb's thing. If you look at their giant, horrible pile of lint rules, you already know this. Airbnb's code was never about doing the right thing for developers. It was about enforcing a thing that you think is right enough for developers. And that culture is not going to adopt new technologies well. There's a reason that their stack hasn't changed much in like, what, eight, 10 years now? There are good engineers at Airbnb, but Airbnb's engineering is not something to look up to. <laughs> and this tweet summarizes exactly how I feel here. The harm in this article isn't that Airbnb moved off of React Native, is that they wrote an article that was clickbaity as hell. And this article should not have been written, at the very least in this way. If it was titled, React Native is exciting and we wish we could use it more, that would be a much more accurate title for what's in here. <laughs> but what Airbnb gave us was not an article about why React Native is exciting. What they gave us is an article about why React Native is not ready. That has been mistakenly cited now for seven years. I will thank them for one thing, though. The beauty of this article is that every time someone shares it as a reply to why you shouldn't be using React Native, you can write off their opinion forever. It's so convenient. It's rare that there are self-owns as hard as this. The people who continue sharing this out-of-date article are entirely irrelevant. And if you ignore their opinions, the conversation gets so much easier to have. And recognize that React Native is a fantastic solution. And if you're not taking advantage of it, you are shipping slower than the company that is. React Native is still the future of mobile dev, even if mobile dev and mobile apps are less adopted every year. Give it a shot if you haven't. Highly recommend using Expo if you do. It's a really good experience. If you want to hear a bit about how to get auth set up on your React Native app, I have a video here where I talk all about using React Native alongside Create T3 app, Turbo, and all the modern repo chaos to have a good TRPC auth solution between your mobile app, your web app, and your server. Check that out if you haven't already. It's a really cool video. Thank you guys as always. Peace, nerds.